guys, welcome back for another video. Today I'm gonna to take you along as we explore Preparing Hearts for His Glory by Heart of Dakota. This is a wonderful guide. I've used it before with my older son and this year I'll be using it again with two of my kids. So let's get started. Here it is, Preparing Hearts for His Glory by Heart of Dakota and many of the books that go with this guide. So I wanna show you guys today inside this amazing program. And first of all, I just wanna show you that this is for ages eight through 10 with extensions for ages 11 through 12. So you can teach kids from eight years old to 12 years old in this guide alone, which is a great span of ages. If you have a large family and you need to kind of work from uh, less guides instead of putting each child in their own guide, if you're able to combine them, this is a great guide to combine them in. Of course, always check with um, their really handy uh, placement charts that they have before you just try to stick your kids in this guide. Make sure that they're placed well in this guide because when your kids are placed well in Heart of Dakota, they have a great year and they'll really enjoy it and you'll really enjoy it. If they're not placed well, you're probably gonna have some frustrations either because it's too easy or it's too difficult and you, don't really, you really don't want either one of those in any kind of homeschool program really. You really need to make sure that your kids are placed well. So don't skip over those placement charts, especially in Heart of Dakota. So let me jump right into this. And first I'm gonna show you guys this guide. So in reading the beginning of this guide before making this video, I did notice that they said that these are their kids. These are Carrie's kids that were going through this program that posed for this photo. So it's maybe not the kind of cover that I would choose, but it's kind of special that they are able to put their own kids photo in this because they wrote this for their kids. And then, you know, she shared it with all of us and it's been such a blessing to so many people. So inside this guide, I have tabs already that I put on this, and these tabs are just um, right here. These post-it tabs, they're like a kind of translucent white post-it tab, and I just wrote on them with my Micron pen here. I just had to wait for it to dry <laughs> because it smeared the first time I tried it. So, but I like these tabs, and they work well in this book because they're sticky, so I can actually just Peel this tab off and place it on the next day when we're done with this day. So this is the day at a glance here. This is your whole day in this guide. And these little boxes are really helpful. They keep you really organized. The way that these are separated, you can clearly see these different areas that you're gonna be working through. And it just, um, for me, in my mind, it makes it a little bit less um, chaotic or stressful. I'm just able to see at a glance here, all of the things that we're gonna be doing today. Excuse my voice, I have a little bit of a hoarse voice right now. I've been fighting this cold, not COVID. I already had COVID several months ago. <laughs> this is just a cold and it's driving me nuts, but I wanted to go ahead and do this video anyway, so uh, I apologize for my voice. If you'll notice in the guide, in each of these boxes, there is a T, an S, or this one has it, an I. So those stand for teacher-directed, semi-independent, and independent. So that just kind of clues you in with this guide if these boxes are something that you have to hold your child's hand through it, or if it's something that they can take the reins, they can take this box, science here for example, they can take this science box and they can do this pretty much on their own especially by the end of the guide, even if they can't do it on their own at first, they'll kind of work on that skill, being able to do that on their own. So by the end of the guide, they are working on science all by themselves. And that kind of goes with the Charlotte Mason philosophy that kids from 10 years on um, should be reading their own books, their own history books and science books. So each guide gets a little bit more independence, especially starting in preparing hearts. Preparing Hearts does a lot of work towards preparing your kids for working independently in future guides. I want to show you this daily layout first and I'll kind of explain all of these books that go with each of these boxes as we go. 
So this will be kind of my anchoring point here for this video for you guys. So your very first box here, unit one, day one, you have reading about history. This box in this corner is always reading about history. And you have your starred um, book here. So your star resources are something that are explained in this, the very front of this book. And when you get your Heart of Dakota Guide, I highly recommend reading through the introduction because it explains so much and it makes everything really clear and kind of click. It'll explain what's going on each day. So if this is for the reading about history box and it'll explain to you each day, day one, day two, day three, this is what's going to be happening those days. And there are only four days a week in this guide, which is kind of nice because the fifth day can be used for other things or you can spread it out to be five days. Um, what I have done in the past is we've taken the history project and done it on the fifth day. So normally the history project you would do over three days. So the first three days of the unit are um, for your history project. Go back to the reading about history. So up here you're gonna have your book listed that you're gonna read from and you read this aloud to your child. And then there's um, a script You'll have questions you can read from. It actually says, after today's reading, say. So in italics, you're going to actually read this. So you've got comprehension, knowledge, application, evaluation, and synthesis. So you talk through these questions with your child. And then I always read this part aloud, this key idea. Because this key idea kind of ties in. Well, at first, it focuses on the key idea of your reading for the day. And if you read all of the key ideas in these other boxes, it ties all of this together. So this is a unit study, which means that these topics just branch out into all different places. But because of these key ideas, Carrie, the author of this book, has very nicely pulled all of the things together. So it makes sense and you know why you're researching this topic and you know what you're learning in history and how it ties into Bible and then science, how science ties into, you know, geography or uh, more history or whatever else it is. All of these things will tie in together and these key idea boxes are so helpful at helping tie up all of these um, strands, kind of, all of these different things. Let me go ahead and show you kind of your spine for history. So these are the books that are gonna be listed in that history box. You've got Grandpa's Box. This is an excellent book. And you've got um, a child's story, a child's history of the world. You've got Hero Tales. And you've got Life in the Great Ice Age. So you don't read these all at the same time, but you read them when they come up in this history box here. So those are kind of your spine books that you have to have to complete the history in Heart of Dakota, Preparing Hearts for His Glory. So after this box, you've got down here your history project, which I already mentioned, you do this three days a week. So for this first unit, and this you can actually see this on their website. They have this first page so you can um, kind of get an idea of what's in their curriculum. These history projects are, um, they use materials that you have on hand for the most part. And if you don't have something, it's usually something you can either um, replace with something else that you do have. It's not a big deal. These are easy projects to accomplish. So this first one here is to make a shield of faith in your own coat of arms. And it actually ties into your research over here. This box right here is not always research. This is your rotating box. So this changes from day to day. The first day of each week, they have some kind of research topic. And you'll go over this with them. You'll teach them how to research. Uh, this usually doesn't have something to be written down that I have noticed. I can't remember when we did this before how much um, writing there was involved in this. I think this is mostly just kind of something that they look up, they find out um, about this topic. So here they're looking up coat of arms and you can discuss it. You orally answer these questions about it and then that helps them with their history project for this week. And up here we have the story time box. Um, either you're going to be reading from the Bible or you'll be reading one of these story time books. 
And these are actually listed in the appendix of the, um, of the guide. So if you buy a guide used, you can find all of these books listed in the appendix. We've got, not in order, <laughs> The Door in the Wall, 20 and 10, The Family Under the Bridge, Raiders from the Sea. This is one of our favorites, this whole series. Tirza, or Terza. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I always said Tirza. I don't know if that's right, but this is another excellent book. All of these are really great books, but this was, I remember this one being, I think I cried actually. It's just, it's really good. And then we have The Wonderful Winter, Fountain of Life, Triumph for Flavius, Aesop's Fables, and then we have Noah's Ark, The True Story of Noah's Ark. These books, these story time books, are read-alouds. You read these aloud to your child. And oftentimes, I'll read these at bedtime to my kids. So we'll just snuggle up right before bed and we will read what we're supposed to read for the day. And it works out really well for us. And these are all, like I said, these are all excellent books. I've read through these before with my older son and there's not a single one of them that I didn't like. <laughs> they were all good. He enjoyed them very much as well. So independent history study. This is for your kids to do on their own. And this uses these books over here. The Little Riders, Pedro's Journal. These are not in order. They're just different books throughout the year. So all of these books we read throughout the year, not at the same time. Minstrel in the Tower, Little Miriam of Galilee, the Young Christian's Introduction to the Bible, The Trojan Horse, The 5,000-Year-Old Puzzle, Mozart Wonder Boy, and this actually has a CD with it. Well, one of our favorites, Draw and Write Through History. This, a lot of this is used um, for work that they do in their notebook, which I will show you in a minute. Peter the Great, Leaf the Lucky, and William Shakespeare and the Globe. So those are all the independent history books that your child will read on their own. And then they'll have an activity that goes with this in their student notebook, which I will show you in just a minute. That is the left side of your plans, the learning through history side. And then we'll jump over to this side, which is the learning the basic side. So poetry, poetry is in the back. I have it tabbed right here. It's the very last section in the appendix in the back. All of the poems are kept there. And then these poems, you'll, um, you'll do some activities with these poems. You'll read them, you'll talk about them. You'll, um, they'll have some questions to answer. Sometimes they do writing activities with the poetry. And then, it, so it often ties into the language, language arts. arts box. And this is something that you do with them, but there's also portions that they'll do by themselves. So you'll start with dictation. And in the back, again, in the appendix, there is dictation level two, level three, and level four. This will be the very first one they do. And what you do is you let them look at this for 30 seconds, a minute, however long they need, so they can study it. It's called studied dictation. So they're allowed to look at this. They notice the spelling of the words. They notice the punctuation. And then when they're ready, you'll take this away and they'll write on a marker board or a piece of paper as you dictate this to them. So you can call it out in, um, in phrases or you can read it all together. I can't remember what the instructions said. I have to read through these instructions again. But if I remember right, basically you would say, Sue has a bird, and they would repeat it back to you. Sue has a bird. And then they would write it down. And then you'd say, it can call and sing. And then they'll repeat it back to you. It can call and sing, and they'll write it down. And then you'll say, king, ring, wing. Or maybe you'll just say one at a time and have them repeat it back to you. Then they write it down. Then you give them some time to look over it, to catch any mistakes if they can. And then you'll give this book back to them and you'll let them check their work. And if they've missed anything, they'll circle it. It actually says to circle it here, but um, I guess that's up to you if you want them to write in this book or not. Um, and then they'll fix it in their own writing. And then they'll do this again each day until they've gotten the whole thing correct the first time. 
then they move on. When they get it correct, you can put a check mark. What I do, because I have multiple kids using my guides, I'll put their initials here, or I'll let them do it. And then they move on to the next one. And they'll keep doing that throughout the year for all of these. The next thing in this box is drawn into the heart of reading. So this is their reading instruction. So at this stage, they are past the phonics stage and they're past the emerging readers and they have moved into this drawn into the heart of reading. This is Heart of Dakota's reading program. But I'll show you that at the end of this video. All right, next we have work with the student to complete one of the English options listed below. So these are the Rod and Staff books, um, Beginning Wisely and Building with Diligence. These are two different levels of Rod and Staff, or you can use your own grammar program. Let me show you these books real quick. Rod and Staff books. We have Beginning Wisely, which is the level three book for Rod and Staff, and we have Building with Diligence, which is the level four. Now these levels are not, um, they're not the same as public school grade levels. Rod and Staff is pretty advanced. I and love these books for teaching grammar. They are very thorough. They are straight to the point. They don't have a lot of fluff. It's a really solid program. I do recommend getting the teacher guide with these, especially with level four, because it gives you a lot of pointers in here and it gives you answers. It's something you wanna have so you can look up the answers if you get stuck. To go with the language arts, they'll just need a little book. I actually made this for my daughter. I have a little Etsy shop. I don't have this one posted in my Etsy shop, so you can't buy this one right now because it was um, kind of difficult to assemble. It's the first one I've made like this, but anyway, you can just get um, just a, a small, simple lined notebook for them to do their language arts lessons in. When you do the lessons, you don't need to do all of this written work. This is meant for a classroom originally. So when we do this at home, we'll go through this lesson about pronouns and noun phrases, and we'll just, I'll sit on the couch usually with my kids and I'll have my teacher book, they'll have their student book, and we'll read through this together. And then this oral drill, we'll do this whole thing out loud, written practice, review and practice. So between these two, we'll do maybe a third to a half of this written work. And I'll usually just kind of glance at it and see which ones that I want them to actually write down. We'll split it up so that it's maybe half out loud and half written down. Back over to our teacher guide here. Let me talk about science for a minute. I love their science. Um, my son who went through this in the past loved their science. This is, um, it really is a unit study style science here. So you have these books right here. These are all the science books that they're gonna read through. And this is an independent box for them. So they read these. They read these according to the page numbers that they're given for the day. And then they'll have some kind of activity to do with it. They'll either have like a notebooking assignment or questions to answer or an experiment at the end of the week. And it really just pulls from everywhere. So you can see in this one, so they're gonna read One Small Square Arctic Tundra and they'll, they'll set up their notebook and then they'll copy down a scripture and then they're going to be making a map. This says they're gonna trace a map that they're gonna look at on this Arctic Tundra page. So they're gonna open their book, they're gonna look at this map and they're gonna draw it themselves. They're gonna color the tundra blue and then they're gonna copy the first sentence of text next to their picture. Then they're gonna look at a real globe and see where the tundra is found. And again, here's this key idea here that usually the science here will tie right back into history. I love the unit study approach that this science has and it just gives them a view of science from kind of a broader perspective. So using all these books, they get, they get to see science applies to the world that they're talking about, the time period in some of the guides. Um, and I think it's really neat. It's not such an up close look at, you know, microorganisms or something. Now they'll get maybe a closer view at science in the older guides, but in these younger guides, I just love how this is done with the literature approach and just looking at kind of this science topic as a whole, just from further back. So they can see all these parts and how it all goes together with the geography, 
with, you know, they'll talk about animals, they'll talk about water, they'll talk about this ecosystem, they'll talk about like all of these things that connect together. So they're not thinking that science is just this one little thing that's far away. I, it's not, it's not like that. They get like a broader view of it. And I really love how Heart of Dakota does that. And last but not least, this Bible study box, we are going to be talking about the Psalms this year. We're going to be reading through the Psalms. We'll be having questions to answer. We'll be having discussions about the Psalms. We'll be talking about a character trait, godly character traits. They're going to be memorizing scriptures from the Psalms. And this Lead Me to the Rock CD, they actually sing the verses that we're going to be memorizing. So, and I've listened to a portion of this, the samples online, and I think it's really beautiful. So I went ahead and bought this, and we're going to be listening to this because I think it's really good. And I have this Bible here that we use for our um, Heart of Dakota curriculum. It's an NIV, I believe. Yep, NIV because that's what they have suggested in some of the younger guides. I'm not sure if that's what's suggested in this book, but I have the NIV. We use this for school. That's kind of our school Bible. So um, you will definitely need a Bible doing this curriculum because... You'll see, even on the first day, you're going to be reading from Ephesians. You're going to be reading, this is actually the same portion, just, well, a portion of what you're going to be reading for the story time. And you'll be reading scripture over here. It's used throughout. They're going to be copying scripture and science. You can't get a more Christ-centered curriculum than this, in my opinion. I've never seen a curriculum that has woven Jesus Christ into the pages the way that Heart of Dakota has. So one more thing I wanted to mention before we look at the notebook are these books right here. These are the extension books. So these books are for your 11 or 12 year old that is doing Preparing Hearts for His Glory. Now when to use these books is not on your daily page here. You actually have to look in the back in the appendix has your extension schedule. So they have all of the books listed out that are part of the extension and the weeks that they're going to be used. And then you have your actual schedule here that will tell you what pages to read. These extension books are written at a higher reading level. So this brings their um, independent reading up to their level. These independent reading books are at a lower reading level. So these extensions are meant to, um, to just up the reading level for your older students. Let me just go through these books for you guys so you can see what they are. We have Louis Pasteur, Journey to America, The Shakespeare Stealer, Who Was Marco Polo, Adam of the Road, Bjorn the Proud, The Bronze Bow, Aesop's Fables, Ancient Civilizations, and Uncovering the Mysterious Woolly Mammoth. And that was not in order. I probably have them in opposite order, actually. <laughs> so again, that's in the appendix here. I have my extensions um, tab already made. So, and again, these are sticky tabs. So when we're done on this page, once we've gone through this first unit, I'll just peel it up and stick it on the next page. So all I ever have to do is hold on to this tab and open my book and we're right where I need to be to see what um, the extensions are for the day. If you guys have stuck with me this far, I'm ready now to dive into this notebook. Now this is new for this year. Um, well, I guess they came out with this in like March, maybe March, April, something like that. So I have not used these notebooking pages before. The last time I did preparing hearts, they didn't have notebooking pages. So I'm excited to see how this works out. Um, my kids are excited to see how this works out. My daughter just came down while I was making this video and she's super excited to start school because she heard me talking about all the awesome books that we get to read. So I wanna show you what I've done. I just got um, a three ring notebook. I think this is like a one and a half inch, maybe one and a half inch, I think. I don't think it's two inch. Anyway, I've just got a simple notebook here. I got these dividers on Amazon. If you guys are interested, I'll link them below. But they're just kind of, um, I don't know, slightly decorative, but not too distracting. <laughs> so this first section, I have the Preparing Hearts for His Glory Independent History Study Notebook. 
So this goes with these independent books. Again, these are the independent history books that they'll be reading on their own. And they'll be working in this every day. So they have a little something to do every day. So plants and trees, this they're actually gonna be drawing from this book here. So they're gonna actually be drawing their, let me find the page. Okay, so they're gonna be drawing their plants and trees from this book right here in this box. So that's really nice, they'll be able to do that. And they can just use colored pencils. I wouldn't, um, I don't think markers would work well on this. They'd probably just wipe right off because this is kind of a slick paper. You even see colored pencils here. <laughs> Use colored pencils. <laughs> okay, and then they'll have a dinosaur here. They have something to write here. So each day they have one box to work in. Just so a little bit to do in this notebook each day. These next sections are part of the main notebooking that goes with the regular history books here. So what they're gonna do in section one is a written narration. So at the end of each unit, they're gonna have one written narration to do. So their very first unit, their very first week, they'll have one written narration to do here. And their next week, the next unit, they'll have one written narration to do here. So they'll be working in this notebook once a week. Now this section two here is their vocabulary, which they're gonna do once a week also. They'll do this one day. They'll look up these words, they'll write the definition, the sentence, and they'll draw a little picture here. And then they have these guess the meaning words down here. And that is all they do for that day that they have vocabulary. And then there's section three, which is your timeline. And now um, in the guide here, it's gonna direct you to cut out these timeline cards and they're gonna make their timeline card, they're gonna set it up the way that the book tells them to. And the book actually has them kind of make these either as a stair step on a wall, which I'm not gonna do because I have these creatures <laughs> that will probably knock them off the wall. So I've decided instead, um, to set up this timeline book. I already told you guys I have an Etsy shop and I make a lot of printables. So I went ahead and made this and what we're gonna do is, this is our timeline. <laughs> we're just gonna keep it right here in our notebook. So we're gonna cut these out and we're going to paste them onto this timeline here. And we'll just, we'll put as many as we can on one page and then we will flip to the next page and keep going like that. That's their timeline that they do once a week and I set up their notebooks to have um, this blank paper for their science section. They're gonna make their own science pages this year. I thought about making printables for this, but I decided, you know what, looking back on it, I really like to see their work. I wanna see how they set this up, because it's really, I really love it. I cherish their work <laughs> when I have it to hold on to. And then this next section is just lined paper for when we need it. Um, I might turn this into the language arts section or dictation or something. I haven't decided yet because I'm still on the fence about um, which, uh, which language arts we're going to use this year. Um, yeah, I'm still deciding between just going with the rod and staff and the drawing to the heart of reading that is listed here in the guide or we're going to continue with the good and the beautiful. I'm not sure. My girls love the good and the beautiful. Um, my older daughter has some drawbacks with it. She doesn't really like the biographies that she's supposed to be reading. She thinks they're kind of difficult and long. So I don't know. I'm still, I'm still praying on that and I'm figuring it out. We might end up doing The Good and the Beautiful because it really works well for my kids. It really does. Um, Rod and Staff, though, like I said, is excellent. So I think you can't go wrong either way. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's another video. Another time I'll do kind of a comparison for those for you guys. So those are the notebook pages. That's where all of our work's gonna be kept. Oh, and if you're interested, ooh, I can't do this very well with one hand, but this, this is just like a clear zipper pocket I also found on Amazon. So if we have loose things from doing projects or something, that, that's where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right in here. And um, these came with my dividers here. Each of my girls has one of these notebooks and they'll keep all of their work for preparing hearts right here in this notebook. 
So real quick, I wanted to show you Drawn into the Heart of Reading. This is Heart of Dakota's um, reading program. It's a literature program. So what they're going to do is they're going to study the different genres, and they have some discussions, and they learn story elements, and um, all kinds of good things in here. So this is the teacher's guide where you get all of your information as the teacher, and this is used for all of the different levels. All of the different levels are written right into this teacher guide, so you can teach all of your kids at once. And then you've got the different student notebooks that are level. I'm just going to show you guys real quick some of the Drawn into the Heart of Reading book packs that I have. I've collected a pretty big library of them over the years because I've done this for several years now. And we haven't always done Drawn into the Heart of Reading, but we have read the book packs, the books from the book packs, and I'll show you those real quick. So right here in this shelf is where I keep our Drawn into the Heart of Reading books. So these are all books from the different book packs that we have collected. Um, and then a few others. I think some of those are actually from one of um, like the reading options from Bigger Hearts maybe. And then these containers down here have the, um, the guides and the books that go with the guides for the levels that we are not currently using. So over here I have um, catalog just in case I needed to look something up. <laughs> I've got the emerging readers and some of the extra books that are listed um, that go with the emerging readers is just an optional book and I've shown you guys that in another video and then over here I have the level twos and level threes and I do have tape on them. I take washi tape and I will use the same color for the different book packs. So for each book pack, each book um, pack level, I've got different washi tape. So I've got my level twos, my level threes, and the level fours. And some of these I just haven't put washi tape on yet. And then we've got some more over here. I've got some level fives and some ones with no tape on them. I think those are sixes because I just didn't mark them yet. Um, yes, actually, maybe they're fives. I don't remember what they are. I'll have to look. But these are some of the ones my daughter is going to be reading this year. She is super excited about this one, Castle Corona. For whatever reason, she's probably judging a book by its cover, which I have to teach her not to do that. <laughs> but she wants to read this one first. She's really excited about it. We'll probably do a book review on this one because of how excited she is. Um, and then she's going to be reading these other books here as well. And then my younger daughter, I think she's, what did I get for her? I think she's doing the level three books, if I remember right. I will do another video all about Drawing to the Heart of Reading, and I'll show you these books in more detail. But I wanted to give you a quick look at it today. Oh, while I'm at it, I'll give you guys a sneak peek. This will be another video too, but this chest here, it looks like a little um, suitcase. I can't pull it out right now, but... This has our maps in it, and I think it's really fun because whenever we do geography, we get to pull this out, and we pull out our maps that are rolled up, and um, I'll show you guys all about that because it's been really fun. It's been neat. And this here, huh, this is probably pretty ambitious of me. I don't know how it's going to work out, but this chest, I've decided to start collecting little figurines for Grandpa's box. Uh, I only have two right now. <laughs> If I can't find them, we might just make them out of clay and stick them in there for fun. So we have Grandpa's box right here in our living room. <laughs> and then we have our globe. So we use this globe all the time. It has been through some use and abuse over the years. I think I've taped it in the middle. I got this from a yard sale and it's lasted us forever. So that's kind of my, um, my setup out here for this bookshelf. I'll show you guys my organization if you would like to see that in another video. And, um, yeah, so thanks for sticking with me. Um, my voice is about to go, so I think I'm going to have to cut this video now. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and stay tuned for more videos to come. There's a creeper. <laughs> He's going to play a game upstairs. Don't blow up! Don't blow up! <laughs> you blew up my table.